thank you for joining us today. I, well, like I said, we're going to have people, more people trickling in here. But um, right now we have um, our Orange County clerk recorder, recorder clerk, um, Hugh in with us. And he is going to show us how much better it is to join the future instead of having to walk into the county recorder's office or depend on title to do that. We're gonna, um, we did join the, the 21st century here and he is going to show us what to do. Um, now, Hugh, of course, is, um, we are so, he's in his new building there. Awesome. And <laughs> <laughs> look at that background. I just, can't believe how beautiful that is. Now, he was appointed to um, by the board in 2013, elected in 2014, again in 2018, and once more in um, this year, By and the vote was awesome this year, he won the vote by 84.5%. Is that, that's, yay. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. Um, and why don't you start telling us how you do that there? Yeah, good morning. Uh, thank you for having me here today, OC Realtor. I appreciate always sharing what we do here with uh, the realtors, the people we uh, you know, have vested interest in our office. I have with me uh, to my right is our new chief deputy recorder, Robert. Um, and to my left is our deputy recorder, uh, Rosa. Um, they are the one that helps me with the day's work and, and, and everything. So if you have any issue, don't call me, you call them, not me. So you call them um, and I'll give them your number. I, I always tell Rosa that she thinks it's funny. So, but um, yeah, you know what? Um, we have a great office here. Uh, I've been blessed. I've been here 28 years. I started as a document uh, examiner back in 94. Uh, actually learned how to examine real property documents. So uh, then started moving up the ranks, became supervisor. 1998, Mr. Granville, who was my former previous boss, thought of a brilliant idea of electronic recording. And we were the first in the country, in the state. And he added uh, San Bernardino with us. And uh, we ran with it as the pilot in 1998. And um, I mean, you know, back then people, other counties, I can say, they were very critical of Mr. Granville. Matter of fact, they didn't even like us. <laughs> they thought, you know, what he was doing wouldn't work. But uh, fast forward now, uh, you have to electronic record and be successful in, in the state, right? And so I believe Mr. Granville grandfathered it in. And I was blessed to be part of it in 98 to help implement electronic recording. So now we fast forward to now, which is... Um, we started doing electronic recording, but secure. We own a system, just so you guys know, with four owners. So Los Angeles, San Diego, Riverside, and Orange County are the owners of secure. And secure is an amazing system. It's I believe is a state of the art and it's the best system in the whole country. Uh, we share the cost together. And we also have 16 partners that have joined us in this system that we use. And so it makes it uh, really easy for the, the title companies and the escrow um, to use one system and submit it, even though you're you know, in Ventura, Santa Barbara, Sacramento, Imperio, those are some of the counties, Sacramento, that uh, you know, I, I can think of right offhand that use our system. We are the lead county. What that means is we signed up everybody. We help with the daily operation. And so we're proud to be uh, the lead county in electronic recording. And just so you know, in Orange County, we record 80% electronically, 80, which is amazing. That means we have no paper in this office besides some of the mail that we get in. And two years ago, a bill was passed that allow other vendors, just not the escrow company to use uh, electronic recording. So we have over 5,000 users. And what excites me is like, uh, IRS, FTBs, uh, all the big agencies, they record electronically. They don't have to mail in packages anymore. And also a lot of city clerks in the County of Orange, they record electronically. And so my goal is continue. I wanna challenge staff 
to get up to like 90% electronically because it's so efficient. Um, and it, 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 it helps us not only have quicker confirmation for you guys who, you know, you did your part selling your home and, and get it recorded quickly so your homeowners can move in, right? They're waiting. Every day is very important. We don't want to delay recordings. Uh, we, as long as it meets the requirement, we're going to record it. We're not attorneys. We're not going to, my staff understands that. Uh, we're not going to challenge things that are not needed. You know, like I hear from other people that other counties are very strict, right? Uh, I don't know why they are. I mean, <laughs> they're not attorneys, so I don't know what they're doing. But um, for us, I can tell you this, we will record and we record not only 8 a.m.s, we record till 4 p.m.s. One of the only counties, uh, a few counties in the in the state that records till 4 p.m. And if somebody happens to forget and they don't abuse the system, we're going to help you record it that day. That I can promise you. Our staff have that understanding. We're here to help make life easy for everyone. Uh, we have zero mail carryover in Orange County. Uh, anything that's mailed into our office, it's examined and recorded the same day. Uh, I'm proud of that because there's no carryover. And also, um, six years ago, I implemented auto indexing when I first came on board. Um, what that means is in the past, once a document is recorded, our data entry staff would have to sit there and index, just sit there and key documents all day. I don't know how they do it. And they do such amazing work. Um, but, you know, they would index 600, 700 a day. And so we created this program called auto indexing. So what that means is once a document is scanned in, it captures the areas we believe the names are at. And so now it populates the field where it's next to each other and they just have to verify now. And so what does that mean for the uh, taxpayer and, and for Orange County? We have saved almost $6 million in staffing. We went from 17 staff in data entry and imaging to down to like seven right now. We're down to seven. And we didn't lay off anybody. I just want to let you guys know, as people retire and promote it, I just didn't replace them. And so very proud of that. Um, before it used to be seven to 10 days. So you, if you record a document today, you couldn't view it till probably next Monday, right? Now it's less than 48 hours. That's how quick it is and how efficient it is. And by doing all these technologies, we're the lowest recording fees in the state. So if you record a document with us, the first page is seven, $7 for the first page. Our neighboring counties are at 15, double what we record here in Orange County. And also the second page is $3 and of course, $3 for the district attorney fraud fee. So a document is $13, two pages grant deed if you record in Orange County. But here's the issue that I've had for six, seven years that I'm still um, trying to figure out what to do here is you guys all remember the SB2 that went in play where it charges, it's, a, 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 it's for um, low income bill that, uh, Senator Atkins put together. We fought that till the last day, till 10 o'clock at night. It's an additional $75 on top of recordings. And I think it's unfair. And I'm still going to continue to say that. And so I can tell you this, since the start of um, collecting SB2, we in Orange County, there's 58 counties in the state. We in Orange County have contributed $151 million to the state, $151 million. And so it's still hard for my staff today when they come in and record and it's $13 and we tell them it's $88, right? They question us, they get really upset. So what I've been doing is I've been working with the association of the uh, recorders and I, I want, I feel like we should audit the state to see where the money is being used, if it's being used for low-income homes in, in Orange County. I've talked to, to our CEO. He notifies everybody in the County of Orange, the different uh, cities to try to get that money. That was th what the money is for, right? And so I wanna uh, see later on, maybe early in the year, next year, to try to see if we can ask the state to give us a report. And if it's 
so much money just sitting there. I think we should modify and lower the fees for the people in Orange County. So I just want to let you guys know, if that happens, I might come to the OC Realtor and ask for your help and uh, support it. And so that's some of the things we're working on as of today um, on SB2. Um, also, just so you know, recording fees, Billy, you want to put it up real quick? Uh, I'm going to show you a stats of our um, since 2013 recordings. If you look at the, the stats that we have, in 2013, we recorded 716,000 documents. Move that might screen over there. And so if you look in 2020, 781 was a great year for us. Uh, 2021 was 20, I'm sorry, 2020 was a great year and 2021 was a great year. But this year have really, really slowed down for us. If you see our recordings and projected, we're going to be at 420. In 28 years I've been here, I don't remember even being in 420s. Uh, the other lowest year I remember was 486 in 2018. And I was here when we record a million documents four consecutive years. So just so you know, um, and maybe I can get a feedback at the end from uh, you guys, how you see the markets moving. But for us, we don't see it. The recording is very low. Um, as you see on the screen, um, it's, it's super low. And so I just wanted to share that with you guys on that. Um, let's take that up. And so for the recorder side, um, that's what's going on for us. Um, we're always working on ways to be more efficient. And, but, you know, I know as realtors, you guys, you know, a lot of your clients, you know, needs to know what we do on the clerk side. So I want to share that with you a little bit. Uh, on our clerk functions, we issue vital records, birth, death, and marriage certificate. Uh, if your homeowners need to file a fictitious business name, our office file FBNs doing business as DBA. Notary, if you want to become notary, some of you probably have come to our office and file your bond with us to become a notary. And when you're done be, being a notary, you turn in your, your, your journal and your book with us. Um, also, you know, we do some fun stuff here too, beside recordings. We issue marriage license, lots of marriage license. Uh, uh, also, we help out with passport, new passport. So if you have any client that needs to get a passport, we do passport services, new ones, and we take passport photos. And our photos are cheaper than Walmart, than Costco. I'm proud of that. We're $7, which is amazing for photos because, again, technology. And so during the pandemic, um, like uh, our title of our meeting here, um, I'm going to answer the question at the end, Joyce. Um, so I'll, I'll do that. Uh, Aaron will call it out. Um, so, you know, um, because of electronic recording, when the pandemic hit, we had zero stoppage, no stress on the recorder side. I can tell you that because the electronic recording was so amazing. It kept working, right? And people continue to submit. And so it was so easy. But on the clerk side, it was very difficult because constitutionally, we're supposed to issue marriage license and perform ceremony if people want to get married at our office. And for a whole month, the whole county, the whole state of California shut down and we didn't do marriages in the whole United States. And so I, I just had to do something. I didn't know what to do, but we did it. And so I thought about ticket booth and putting ticket booth, putting my staff safely inside a ticket booth, of course, with AC, right, in the summer, because it was March sometime last year, uh, two years ago. And so I called the fairground and asked him for a ticket booth. Uh, OC Fairground, what you were saying, Aaron, yesterday was their last day. Uh, so I called them and asked the CEO from ticket booth, and she says, what are you going to do with ticket booth? I said, I'm going to do some weddings. And she said, for reals? I said, yeah, for reals. And so I had to think of a place that was big for social distancing. And so I thought about the Hana Center. And I thank God I have some good relationships over there with the president of the Mighty Ducks. And I called him. I said, Tim, can I borrow your parking lot? And he said, yeah, for sure. What are you doing with it? And I said, I'm going to do weddings. And so 
that's how it all started. We uh, first had three ticket booths. We ended up having six. And we were the first in the whole country to open, uh, to do marriages. And um, it was, a, you know, very difficult time. Everything was so negative on the news, people passing away, so sad. And weddings was something that people were happy about. And so we ended up in nine months at the HANA Center issuing 18, almost 18,000 marriage licenses. And we did almost 12,000 ceremonies in the parking lot of the HANA Center. So I wanna share with you guys real quick a video. This not only went in the United States, it went nationwide. And we ended up doing almost 47 counties, states, I'm sorry, in the United States that actually uh, got married with that. So I'll share with you a video real quick if you guys can watch it. In the parallel universe where we are living our previously scheduled lives, the National Hockey League's You see it okay, Aaron? You guys are good? Moving on to play for the Stanley Cup. I think we lost the sound. Yeah, there's no sound. Yeah, I hear no sound as well. Now can you hear it? Just sound. Can you guys hear the sound now, Aaron? It's very faint. Yeah. You have it up low? Can you hear it, Aaron? No, it's still really quiet. Why don't you just walk us through what's going on? Yeah, so um, right there, they're showing us, talking to us about um, how weddings were being done. As you can see on their it was a big parking lot and our staff behind inside oh, the couples were outside that. getting married. You can turn the volume up more. It's lower now. So we doubled the boot to six. Um, People were getting married early at 8.30 and still drinking. This couple was drinking champagne at 8.30 in the morning. Hey, it's noon somewhere. <laughs> oh, five o'clock somewhere. Five o'clock. That's right. Five o'clock. They got married in Mexico, but they um, never turned in their marriage license. You're supposed to turn it in. So they went and got married again. <laughs> Right there. Can you hear it now? Yeah. Slow around. Now they can. Okay, our sound is going in and out, but in and out. Yeah. <laughs> it's in and out again there yeah okay let's just shut it down it's not working oh but it's such a beautiful sight all right excellent. what's wrong with that all right billy will share it with you guys i'm so sorry um the volume was as, as good. But yeah, we that's what we did for marriages. A lot of happy couples. And uh, it was uh, amazing for us to uh, do that. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll share the video for you right now. And so we do some fun stuff too, beside recordings. Um, but marriages has been up 30% since the pandemic in uh, Orange County. And so beside that, um, you know, I like, you know, I know a lot of you personally which I really enjoy talking to everyone. And I don't know if you know, but um, three years ago, um, you know, as you know, I was born in Vietnam and I came over and I was seven years old and uh, I was told my dad died during the war. And so we came over here in 75. We uh, got rescue on the USS Midway in San Diego. You guys all been to the US Midway in San Diego? 
Yeah, without that ship, I yeah. wouldn't be here. And so that ship rescued 3,073 refugees in 1975, April, the fall of Vietnam. And so for many years, you know, for almost 50 years, I didn't have a father. And so one day, uh, a good friend of mine that was on the OC register, he said, you're in charge of all the important records in Orange County, and you don't even know who your father is. And so I made a commitment and I submitted my DNA through Ancestry. It took me two years, but um, I was able to find my dad and he was alive living in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, Cookville, Tennessee. So it took me uh, 50 years, but I just want to share some happy news that I did find my dad after 50 years. And, uh, you know, he's a really great guy. Um, he didn't know about me. Um, I have four uh, half brothers, uh, three half brothers and one half sister, and they live in Cookville, Tennessee. And uh, it's been really uh, amazing to have a father. And, uh, you know, my first father day was really awkward because I never was able to, you know, call somebody dad, right? And so it's taken me some some time to get comfortable with it, but uh, it's been so amazing. Um, and uh, he's very loving and very, you know, uh, good to me and my family. And so we did have a video, a really nice video to watch, but I don't know about the volume. So um, I don't want you guys not to be able to hear it. We can play it and you can tell me if it's no good. You can't yeah. hear it and Billy can share it. Okay. Yeah, let's try it again. Okay, Cause that's a heck of a record. Okay, are we? He's going to play it right now. Okay. Play and see what happens. Can you guys hear it? Hold on. Well, we now. A man searches for his father for a yes. few Aaron, years. Aaron, Countless states here in yes. the U.S. In yes. Different countries. Okay. The trail finally leads him to Cookville, Tennessee. His amazing journey in tonight's Farrier Files. Hugh Wynn has never had it easy, but he's also never quit. And sometimes if you hope and pray and persist, miracles happen. Hugh Wynn was one of 25,000 Vietnamese children born to United States servicemen. The communists hated these aberrations. He was tall and light-skinned and light-eyed and bullied. He had no dad. At least that's what he thought when his pregnant South Vietnamese mom came to the base to find Hugh. The soldier there said he was dead. Things were so bad, so poor, that Hugh's grandmother signed him up for Operation Baby Lip, a program to get Vietnamese kids to the U.S. She had guilt that she was given as up for adoption. So she said, I was going to keep my, uh, my, nephew, my, my grandkids. Uh, if something happens, we all die, we'll just die together. And so that was in the morning when they picked me up. Two o'clock in that afternoon, the plane that I was supposed to get on crashed in the rice field. And 138 people died, 78 children died. So I should have been on that plane, but I believe God had a, a plan for me. Eventually, Hugh and his sister moved to the United States. He is the first Amoration County Clerk Recorder elected in the United States for Giant Orange County. He has a beautiful, close family, but no dad that always hurt. His search took him to Ancestry.com and eventually to a man named Roy Patterson. At first, I thought, no way, no way. I asked uh, when you were born, and she told me, and then I asked uh, uh, where he was born, and he said in the frame. Well, I was in the frame, and the time frame matched up. So I figured it's time for me to step up and, and find out the truth. But this was sensitive, you understand. Roy had to tell his wife, he told his kids, his church. He might have a son, and if so, he was never there for anything. It was shocking to say the least, but also, I mean, it, I, it breaks my heart because I didn't know. Roy and you talked on the phone. They agreed to take a DNA test. Well, I was excited because I wanted to, I mean, you know, if I got a son, I want to know him. The results came back. It's a boy. That day was an amazing day. Uh, my wife and I and my daughter, we cried in the back of our backyard of our house when we saw the result. And so I called him, Roy, and he was super happy and excited about it. But uh, 
You probably was hard that I was the son. Today in Cookville, he and his family met the rest of his family, brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews and cousins, a whole room full. They will tell their story in church tomorrow and for the rest of their lives. Roy has already planned two trips to California for birthday. It's um, been wonderful. I'm uh, thankful for uh, very bomb. And you, who already has a great family, a great job, and a great life, finds out at the unlikely age of 50, he has something else. A dad who loves him. A dad who's proud of him. A dad who wants to be in his life. That's his life. Few winners as other Amerasian kids, all middle aged now. Don't give up. Might just find it. I've been sparing Fox 17 years. Um, yeah, it was, you know, it was amazing, uh, for me because over 30,000 immigration were born during the Vietnam war and only 5% of the children have found their father. And so, uh, it's just really sad for me to see, um, you know, and I'm so blessed. I was able to find, uh, my dad and still alive. I never thought I'd find him alive. So I was, Thank you for watching. I just wanted to share a little bit of the past three, four years. I haven't seen a lot of you in many years now because of the pandemic, right? And so that's some of the things that's happening in our office and in my life. And so I'll open it up for a question, Aaron, if anybody. Well, thank you so much for, for um, sharing that with us. That was just an awesome story there. Um, okay, who do we have that have stories? Can we, how about you guys raise your hands in our reactions button? I know there were, um, I know Joyce, you had a question about what is contributing to the low recordings um, for yes. title this year. Joyce, you wanna kick off our questions here? Sure. Thank you so much, Aaron, and thank you, you Wen, for joining us today. My question is, what do you think is contributing to the significantly low recording rate? And is there something we can do to help or get the word out? No, um, I don't think so, Joyce. I think recording is based on the what's going on, you know, uh, with the interest rate going up so high. Um, that's what we saw when it slowed down. We haven't seen a lot of foreclosure, which knock on wood is good news because, you know, we don't want to see anybody lose their home. Um, but I think a lot of it is from uh, the interest rate. And, 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 and that's what I've been talking to some people about where, you know, the feds are trying to slow down the, the home price. Right. And, and, and now it has. And so I don't know, Joyce, what you guys can do. I think um, as I've been there before, you know, where just a trend. I think things will get better soon, I hope. But uh, anything you guys can think of, let me know. Okay, thanks. Um, can we, I wanna kind of add on to that. We saw um, the Fed raise the race again, but interest rates went down a little bit. You had to project your projected numbers. Um, can I ask how you come up with those projected numbers? Robert. Yeah, Robert can answer that for us. Okay. Go ahead, Robert. Uh, yeah, hi, Robert Duro. Um, basically, these projections are based off of the actuals for the first seven months of the year. Um, so that's where they're coming from. That's uh, the actual numbers from January through July. And then we do a daily average and then we project that out for the rest of the calendar year. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Does anybody have a magic wand where they can wave it at those numbers and actually make them go up? <laughs> so, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Good try, Aaron. Yeah. Aaron, um, I wanted to leave something. Um, uh, and we'll still ask. Uh, we'll still take questions as we go. But there is one thing that I wanted Rosa to update the group on. Is um, and Rosa, you can come here and update us. Um, it's a new bill that we've been working on in Orange County. So go ahead. Good morning, everybody. I'm pretty sure everybody's aware of the AB 1466 
that went into effect right. January 1st of this year. And that's basically uh, restricted covenant language removal on documents that have been recorded. For, uh, we're going back to 1989 to the present. And so far we found 46K hits. Um, hits doesn't actually mean actual restrictive language. It just means words that are similar. So is anybody aware of this? Okay, so right now we're working hard in our department. We're actually not outsourcing it at this point, and we're cleaning up a lot of the books that we have. So far, we have like 30 books that we finished already completed. Um, what year are the book, Rosa? They're in the major books are probably right now in the 1920s to the 1948s. That's where we see most of the hits. And that's because, again, you know, the law became the restrictive language. Um, fair housing came into effect in 1968. So anything from prior to 1968, you'll probably see a lot of documents with restricted language. Anything above 1968, you'll probably see the language because people didn't really, weren't aware that these legals had the restrictive language, if that makes sense. So right now we're, that's what we're working on on a daily basis, trying to find as many as we can. And I know this law actually included brokers and included everybody else that was dealing with the deeds to make sure that if they find this language, that they can come to our office and we can work with them um, and, rest and remove the language. So at any time you can bring forth a document that you find with this language and we will work on it. There's no fee for the recording of the document. Okay. Okay, as we easy as as easy as just giving us a document number sometimes a book and page much. right so and this is um actually all Hugh right that he decided that at this point we were not going to charge the fee we were not going to charge the sv2 fee and there was an implementation that a two dollar fee could be added to the recordings and he chose not to and that's just because you know again for the constituent to make sure that they're taken care of because it wasn't their fault. If you really think about it, they right. had nothing to do with this. Yeah. The reason why I wanted Rosa to say that is because don't, maybe other counties might charge. So I don't want you to. Right. This is only know, Orange only County. Only Orange County. We are, I'm not going to charge because I don't believe we should charge our constituents on that. Right. Awesome. So any awesome. questions? Any questions on that, Bill? It, it looks like we have Caleb here. Um, Caleb. Yeah, good morning. Thank you again for this meeting. I do have a question re uh, regarding uh, 1466. Well, I think it's great that you guys are doing that. Uh, two, actually, a two-part question is, so are you redacting just that information, as I understand it? And then the second question, is there in the county, is there a, a prominent area where we're seeing these clustered? Like, you know, is there one particular area in the county that that is leading the pack as far as having that kind of restrictive language? So, so far on the books that we've been working, it's actually the Balboa Newport area. That's one of the big areas that we've noticed. But again, we're only working on the 600 series right now. So we could see more areas. What we have seen is names that it's, it conti you continue to see the same last name over and over again. So, okay. and thank you. What was your other question? Question. Oh, you're just redacting that information, correct? We are redacting only yes. that information and it actually goes to county council. So what happens is the document is received. We verify that all the information is correct, right? We ask for the customer, if the customer is bringing it to our attention for them to strike out the language. Then we prepare a packet. It goes to county council. County council has 90 days to review it. Once it's reviewed, it comes back to our office. If it is um, approved, we will redact the information that county council has approved, and then it'll be recorded. FYI, the original document does not get modified. Yes. In no way. Thank you. Mm. Wow. Yes. Any other yes. questions? Questions? Well, we can really see who's working so hard for us Hugh. i just just so much that you've done for us it's incredible and uh here's something fun you guys um so you know if you call your group or team something other than um your actual name 
the uh, Department of Real Estate requires you to have a fictitious business name registered with them. So there's one more thing that you can do for you other than all the big important stuff. You can go register your fictitious business name and turn it into the DRE if you want to be called something other than your name for your business. So once more, there's a small business that's near and dear to us. So um, any so other- Aaron, uh, let me add real quick. I'm working on a project. Not many people know, but it's because our inter infrastructure system is not allowing it. But someday, hopefully next year, a business owner can file um, fictitious business name electronically. Oh, so, that would be awesome. Yeah, we're working really hard right now. Again, we're ready to go, but the infrastructure is not. Um, where business owners don't have to mail it in or even come in our office and it'll be done electronically. There is a bill that allows that now. And so we are working hard and hopefully next year I can make a big announcement. And I think all the business owners in Orange County is gonna be really happy about this. And so I just wanna let you know that. Thank you for sharing. Secret up front with you guys. <laughs> Well, how, how much of a secret? I think we need to spread that around. So, <laughs> yeah, no, once we announce it, we will. <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like, oh, do we have, um, now you have, if you guys go into the chat, there is the video, of, Billy put in the video of the Honda Center right there for, um, if you guys want to see the that wedding, those weddings, because that's another pretty awesome thing. Um, Wow, just so much great, great um, information let, you're sharing. Aaron, let me add one more thing. Um, mm -hmm. If you, you know, have something you have to record personally or something that you need done, we do have branch offices that record. Uh, we have a branch office in Laguna Hills, which uh, we record uh, from 8 to 4 p.m. and uh, nine. 9 to 4 p.m. And then Anaheim is 9 to 4 p.m. Um, so it is available. We do have a, you know, South County averages around 30 to 35 customers uh, that do come in and record with us uh, there. And so just want to share that with the group. Yeah. Wow. Once more, more information. Gosh, you are just loading us with this. Such great, such great information. To you. Thank you so much. Um, it looks like we're if we don't have any more questions, you, boy, you gave us all the answers. So um, doesn't look like I have any more questions coming in. So I just want to thank you so much for, for taking the time out of your very busy day and being here with us. Yeah, thank you um, for inviting me. Um, you know, you guys have been always supportive of our department and myself, and I truly appreciate that. And we're here to help you to make it easier for you guys. So just remember, just give us a call if you need anything. Thank you so much. Okay, gang, um, looks like we're wrapping up here. Now I do want to let you know of a couple more things coming up. Um, this Thursday, if anybody is interested in the Joint Forces Training Base at Los Alamitos, the Army Airfield, we are having a tour there. Um, and it's this Thursday, but if this Thursday is too soon, we're having another one in November. Uh, so check your emails for that. Um, also, um, we're going to be sending out something else, another email for, um, it's going to be in September, our next meeting. And um, that would be a legislative update with, um, oh, heck, who do we have? Um, Darcy, you want to step in? It's with Janet Wynn. And there you are. Where are you? Assembly members, Assemblywoman Janet Nguyen and Assemblywoman Lori Davies. So that'll be, um, we're going to be kicking that out. Check your emails for that coming out and register for that. Um, that's another Zoom meeting. So there you go. Um, again, thanks everybody for joining us for this. And I hope you can go out and spread the word.